to see the shaft design on the strength basis so transmission shafts are subjected to the it is axial tensile force uh, it may be bending or uh, sometimes it may be a torsional moment and or there may be a combination right either they act separately as axial or bending or torsional or uh, it may be combination of any two three right so it is like that so that is what the types of the load it is subjected uh, on the shaft then uh, the design of the transmission of the shaft it consists the determining the correct shaft diameter uh, that is from the strength and the rigidity consideration so here uh, we have to find out the correct diameter of the shaft uh, based upon the different types of the load which they are acting on this now uh, we will see one by one up till now we had seen that the separate cases first we will see the separate cases uh, then we will see the combined case so here the first is what when the shaft it is subjected to the axial uh, force right so this is the uh, shaft we will consider and on which uh, there is the tensile force p which it is acting and that is a tensile in nature so here uh, the shaft it may be a solid or it may be hollow so we will see the first one that is for the solid shaft right so this is the solid shaft uh, which is having the diameter uh, d now uh, if you want to find out the uh, tensile stress uh, sigma t is equal to uh, the load applied p and the area which it is resisting uh, to this uh, the deformation right so this is obviously circular uh, solid so therefore the area it is uh, the pi by 4 uh, d square so this is what say, tensile stress induced in this uh, the shaft when it is subjected to the axial uh, tensile force only similarly uh, we can find out uh, for the hollow shaft also so what is the difference uh, the only the area uh, we, in solid the area is completely uh, that is pi by 4 d square we can take and in the hollow so inside there is a hollow part so there are the two diameter outside diameter and the inside diameter so therefore uh, we can find out the corresponding tensile stress sigma t is equal to the load upon area now here what is the area uh, that is uh, pi by 4 uh, outer diameter square uh, do square minus inner diameter square so that is the uh, di square so this is what the first case which already we are aware uh, that when the only one type of the force that is tensile force acting on the shaft uh, then how to find out the diameter uh, this is the ultimate or aim to find out so that uh, we can find out easily now uh, the second case when uh, shaft it is subjected to the uh, pure bending moment right when we apply the load uh, suppose if this is the simply supported beam and on which if you are applying the load on this then uh, definitely it will get uh, bent and if it is the cantilever beam uh, then it can uh, bend like this so these are the few example uh, similarly here uh, that the uh, different types layers are there that is the neutral axis the upper part is compressive in nature uh, bottom part tensile in nature uh, that is what uh, in general we can say the bending stresses uh, that are uh, developed in the beam uh, then how to find out this uh, bending uh, stresses right when a shaft is subject to the uh, pure bending right so again uh, here we are considering for the solid shaft and again uh, for the hollow shaft so for the first uh, the for the solid shaft so bending stress sigma b is equal to uh, mb uh, divided by the z uh, mb is what it is a bending moment and z it is the section modulus uh, what is the section modulus it is a ratio of a moment of inertia i uh, divided by the distance from neutral axis to the outermost uh, layer right uh, now here uh, the what just now i said that is the uh, z is equal to what it is uh, i upon uh, the uh, y i is the moment of inertia and y is what it is distance from neutral x to the outermost layer and uh, for the solid shaft the moment of inertia i uh, we know that pi by 64 uh, d raised to 4 where uh, d is the diameter of the shaft and y uh, it is the distance right from the neutral axis to the outermost so as this is 
the circular uh, shaft yes. right so this is the circular shaft uh, which is having the diameter d and if i take this center from this neutral axis to the outermost means that is uh, d by 2 how we will get uh, now z it is what the section modulus it is the ratio of i upon y uh, and that is pi by 64 d raised to 4 divided by d by 2 so this 2 uh, and the 64 32 you will get and this d it will get cancel third cube so pi by 32 d cube so this is the section modulus z uh, for this circular uh, solid shaft we will get so uh, if we put uh, this value z uh, in this equation right so then we will get uh, the corresponding uh, bending stress developed in the shaft is equal to 32 mb divided by pi d cube so this is what uh, for the solid shaft uh, similarly uh, we can find out uh, for the hollow shaft also so same equation that sigma b is equal to mb upon z the only i it will change uh, the moment of inertia i that is pi by 64 uh, the outer diameter raised to 4 minus inner uh, diameter raised to 4 and then again uh, the y it is what the distance from outermost layer to the innermost so if we consider uh, the hollow uh, right so a small d and capital uh, di inner diameter du outer diameter so from this outermost to the uh, neutral axis so it is uh, do by uh, 2 uh, you will get so we will put uh, this value i and y uh, we will get the z uh, the section modulus i upon y uh, then we will get the z uh, pi by 32 uh, in bracket do raised to 4 minus dr raised to 4 uh, divided by do that is outer diameter and di it is the inner diameter now we will put this z uh, in the equation sigma b bending stress so therefore uh, bending stress developed uh, in the hollow uh, shaft uh, we will get the equation 32 mb uh, divided by pi in bracket uh, do raised to 4 minus dr raised to 4 divided by du so this is what the second case where uh, there is only uh, the pure bending moment it is acting on the shaft and again for the solid and the hollow uh, we can design now uh, we will move to the third uh, type of the load uh, which alone it is acting uh, that is what the shaft it is subjected uh, to the pure uh, the torsion moment you can say and this is the shaft and uh, which we are acting uh, we are applying the torque t and on the opposite side uh, that is the uh, torque which is acting so equal and opposite uh, then and then only uh, opposite this is static slide follow so the torque uh, we are applying uh, we know for the solid shaft again and for the hollow shaft we are going to uh, the derive the equations we know the equations uh, the shear stress produced in the shaft due to this the applied torque t uh, the flexible equation which you are knowing uh, tau by r t by j is equal to g theta by l uh, out of that we are using the two that tau uh, is equal to t by j into the r so where t is the torque r is the what the radius of the shaft uh, j is what the polar moment of inertia of the shaft uh, now we will put all this value what is the r what is the j then we will get the corresponding shear stress so uh, the r is the radius uh, that is what the solid shaft uh, d by 2 we are already aware and j uh, polar moment of inertia for this solid uh, shaft uh, that is what the pi by 32 uh, d raised to 4 so moment of inertia it is pi by 64 d raised to 4 and the polar moment of inertia j it is pi by 32 uh, d raised to 4 uh, that is what the difference right so uh, we will put these two value r and j uh, here in this equation uh, so that uh, the r it d by 2 and j pi by 32 d raised to 4 and if we uh, rearrange this and cancel it uh, then we will get the tau is equal to this is the 2 and here it will get the uh, 16 and then this t uh, it will get the cube so in this way uh, we will get a 16 t uh, divided by pi d cube so that is what the corresponding shear stress induced in the solid shaft uh, we can find out when we applied the uh, given torque right uh, this is what for the solid similarly uh, we can find out for the hollow shaft uh, the same equation uh, tau is equal to t into r divided by j we will find out r and j value so the r is what the radius that is outermost layer so outer diameter divided by 2 that is the uh, radius you will get 
and j uh, for the hollow shaft it is j is equal to uh, pi by 32 uh, here uh, outer diameter raised to 4 minus inner diameter raised to uh, 4 so again we will put uh, in this equation same so uh, do by 2 uh, that is value of the r and pi by 32 do raised to 4 minus dr raised to 4 this is uh, the polar moment of inertia for the uh, hollow shaft and again uh, same here uh, 2 and here you will get uh, the uh, 16 so you will get the 16 uh, t uh, d0 uh, divided by this pi d raised to 4 minus uh, d i raised to 4 so these are the two equations uh, uh, by using which uh, for the solid shaft and the hollow shaft we can find out the corresponding the shear stress uh, provided when there is only uh, the pure torsional moment is acting on the shaft right so the third type of the load we had seen now uh, we see the next uh, the fourth type right when uh, the shaft is uh, subjected uh, that is what the combination of the load uh, so that we can say uh, the principal stress and uh, the principal shear stress when uh, they are acting uh, two type of the load so in that case uh, how to find out right so this is what the here example uh, this is one the body on which the sigma x the tensile stress and uh, the tau it is the shear stress so uh, both the type of the load it is acting so in that case how to find out the corresponding stresses or uh, reverse on the corresponding dimensions of the component now this is the more circle which already uh, we are aware that how to draw and how to find out the different uh, things which already we are aware now uh, from this uh, this is the what the uh, reference line the baseline this uh, o to a that is the sigma x right so which already uh, we are aware uh, then here sigma y it is zero and on sigma x there is something tau so based on this in the upward direction and uh, this is in downward direction negative then you got this joining the diameter then center point we draw on the uh, circle uh, now from this base point to the on the horizontal axis outermost layer o to f that we can call it as a, uh, the principal stress so here uh, we have to find out the principal stress sigma 1 and uh, that is what the o to f distance uh, we have to uh, find out uh, now here uh, this o to f it is nothing but the uh, addition of the different the length so i will divide o to f here uh, o to e this is one distance and then uh, e to f right so o to e and e to f so this we will get and uh, e to f whatever distance it is there it is the radius of the circle right so e to f and again e to b or e to d these all are the radius of the circle so instead of this e to f uh, i can write uh, this e to uh, b so this uh, oe plus eb so this is what the sigma 1 uh, we can get value now uh, if you see that the uh, we will put the value of o to e and uh, e to b now see uh, o to a uh, this is what just now i said this is a sigma x and uh, this distance is what it is the uh, o to a it is half o to e and half that is e to a so here we can write uh, it as uh, that the sigma x by 2 and this is sigma x by 2 and then we will get total o to a that is the sigma x so this o to e uh, distance we need the value that is sigma x by 2 so that value we kept and uh, this uh, e to b is the radius of the circle and uh, if you see here uh, that is what one the right angle triangle uh, we will get right so this is the base and this is the height uh, if we apply the pythagoras principle then base square plus height square and this is square root then you will get the hypotenuse value so the base uh, we know that sigma x by 2 it's a square plus this is a height that is a tau it's a square and if you take the square root then you will get the e to uh, b value so same thing we kept here this value base sigma x by 2 is bracket square plus this height that is a tau square and then square root of that that is the hypotenuse so uh, we put the OE and EB value here. So by using this equation, uh, we can find out uh, that is the major principal stress. Similarly, the maximum shear stress, uh, if you want to find out. So uh, the shear stress is on the vertical axis. So here, whatever the given, the shear stress tau it is there. 
and the maximum value here you will get along this uh, circle uh, periphery here so the here it is the maximum e to h distance is what the maximum this here stress so e to h is nothing but again uh, the e to b uh, these all are uh, the radius of the circle so uh, e to h is equal to e to b now already we calculated the value of e to b here so that is what e to b again base square and the height square so similarly uh, we will get the tau max. Uh, this A to B is nothing but A to H, and that is the tau max, this vertical uh, the distance, that is the maximum shear stress. Uh, you will get uh, in the uh, under root sigma x by 2 bracket square plus tau square. So, this is what uh, the fourth case when uh, there are the two different types of the load acting, that is uh, the principal stress and the shear stress, uh, which it is acting on that, uh, that we can find out. Okay, uh, this is what uh, we have seen uh, the when uh, the different types of the load acting on the shaft and in that case how to find out the stresses.